The kid sitting next to me sticks out like a sore thumb in this SoCal dive. He looks like he's interning for a city councilman with chip monkey cheeks, perfectly coiffed hair, bright eyes matching a baby blue button down and a nasal but family friendly voice. I'd be willing to wager his name is Evan or Billy and that a solid 75% of what comes out of his mouth is punctuated with golly gee. I like your style, he says to me out of the blue. Until that moment, I'd been staring intently into my beer, giving my makeup-free face a double chin. My clothes are factory grubby, and I'm wondering if I can make it five more months out here without strangling my boss, so the compliment startled me. I looked myself over purposefully, give him a furrowed expression to relay my confusion and annoyance. The, the whiskey, he says. That chipper, such a nice young man, voice wavering slightly as he takes notice of my surliness. I, I was talking about your whiskey there. I can't help but notice he's drinking something clear. I grunt a thank you and he resumes conversing with his comrade. I'm a much more charming drunk when I'm in New York, I observe to myself. I down my apparently stylish shot of cheap whiskey and wince more from the pang of homesickness than the burn of the booze. All the laughter in this bar belongs to somebody else's dirtbag drinking crew. <laughs> right now, I'm laughing at myself because in my mind, I could become one of those legends that everyone met somewhere in some bar, the one who disappoints by being shabbily dressed, half in the bag, or a complete asshole. People will eulogize me on Facebook like they'd done Al Goldstein earlier that morning by bemoaning my neuroses and temperament while lauding my relevance and talent. <laughs> Seven hours later, I stand naked, swaying and glassy-eyed in the bathroom. I watch in the mirror as thick spit runs down my chin and between my breasts post-vomit. I'm going soft, I think, Riley. I never throw up in New York. <laughs> Losers Club. <clears throat> Joseph is losing his mobility. He lost his wife after she lost her battle with the bottle back in August. Carrie is losing about 16 hours a day between blacking out and passing out and losing track of who she takes home on any given night. She's long lost her sense of self-respect. Randy is losing his apartment. He doesn't know it, but he's losing his job too. Callie's losing her artistic ambition as she loses patience with that stupid rundown fucking job of hers. Jane is losing hope she'll ever find love. Her eye-batting bar hustle is losing its effect as her breasts lose their elasticity. This is the Losers Club. And me? What am I losing? Well, I don't know, man. All I know is I'm a card-carrying member. Did I ever suspect that I'd end up here? Yeah. I guess I kind of always knew. Oddly enough, I never felt like a loser as a kid. I most certainly was one. But I was armed with enough self-righteous indignation to keep that kind of introspection at bay until my early 20s, when the 12 steps lost me the ability to avoid hard truths about myself. Even when I spun out on crank, I didn't feel like a loser. I was sure those losers at the rehab facility just didn't know how to have a good time. The truth hit around the end of 26. One day, my life in Bay Ridge was falling apart and I took inventory, realized that my list of failures included, but was not limited to, a marriage, sobriety, another long-term relationship, bankruptcy, a couple of careers, Suddenly, maybe the upper middle class Republican cop I'd been fucking for the previous year was right when he joked I was wrong, from the wrong side of the tracks. The only liberal thing about him was how he assigned the loser label to anyone not on the fast track to marriage, kids, and a comfy retirement. It was becoming clearer that that just wasn't me. I was a fucking loser. This realization, the self-doubt and loathing in its wake sparked a depression that ended the relationship. After he kicked me out, I lived for weeks at a time on nothing but bourbon, nicotine, cocaine, and my own snot. I fucked strangers with reckless abandon. I wanted to die, but I wasn't accomplished enough to join the 27 Club. You've got to finish your book first, I tell myself, laying on the floor of my dingy Chinatown apartment between suicidal daydreams. 
It was the Losers Club that saved me. One of its more prominent members, who I lovingly referred to as my personal Bukowski, used his caustic wit and big dick to make me switch dive bars. He plucked me from that den of iniquity on Avenue A, dusted me off a seat at Grassroots Tavern so he could keep a close eye on me while he poured him heavy for the people I'd come to regard as my fellows. I met people there who made me laugh again, made me feel safe again, probably most importantly made me write again. I met the people who t took care of me when I lost battles big and small, including most recently when we all lost him. So that's what it was like. That's what happened. What's it like now? Well, recently I was working on this scene in Fort Greene. I felt like a refugee, gratefully, hungrily accepting the trappings of a place where happy, well-adjusted people drink cocktails and dance, make out in corners, a place where my experience isn't ruled by decay and I haven't let anyone paw through my emotional baggage. Then I felt like indulging in it was an act of ingratitude. I wanted to go home and rot with the rest of my neighborhood. I'm pretty at peace with being a loser, I guess. It's unlikely to change. I'm sticking around to repay what the club has given me. And, of course, to watch the shit show. Occasionally, we make more than just mistakes. But if I may offer a piece of advice, it's best not to get your hopes up. Order a drink, settle in, and make note of the most important tenet of the Losers Club. Never lose your sense of humor. Yeah.